The mic has never done that. Good morning. Welcome to another edition of the Brothers of Legacy. I am your host, Mr. A.D. Walker, the pusher, the grower, the motivator, and the innovator, and the innovative mindset coach. I had no sound there. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you. Good morning, Keita. Good morning, Mama McCory. Good morning, Miss Cheryl Johnson. I think from California. Um, so, yeah, I appreciate you guys rocking. Make sure you share. Uh, my phone is down. So there's, I got situations going on. So make sure you share. Please do so for me. Greetings, greetings. Uh, so we're going to have a great conversation. Do you have a generational mindset? And to my podcast people that didn't hear me because I was muted and you're like, what is going on? Well, you won't know because I'm going to erase that gap. Um, so there'll be no no question. You won't leave the podcast like there's something wrong with this edition or this broadcast today. Uh, so make sure, again, make sure you share, make sure you tag somebody and let the world know that the Brothers of Legacy is on, are on, and we're on. Um, I've had a, an amazing week or weekend. <laughs> had a, uh, Went to the fair. Uh, you know, you realized you're getting older. You don't enjoy things as much. And man, it's our things just so expensive, <laughs> especially fairs and amusement <laughs> parks. Man, but um, had a good time. You know, had one goal in mind of going to the fair personally was to get me a turkey leg. And I accomplished that. Delicious, delicious. Anyway, I uh, appreciate you guys being here, rocking with us. Uh, like I said, do you have a generational mindset? What is your headspace? When it comes to the next generation, um, you know, the questions I ask, are, how are you raising? What are you leaving? Um, and are, are your plans and goals set to help the next generation or just to help you right now? Now, get it. Some things you plan are going to help you. Um, <laughs> some things are going to plan you plan are going to help you as well as the next generation. Keita said, oh, man, I missed that. <laughs> is it? That's, that is like the only thing I look forward to with these uh, these fairs. Just get me a turkey leg because you just can't get the turkey leg. Um, and if you want to know my fascination, we'll talk about that later. Uh, but, yeah, so today I'm talking about do you have a generational mindset? It may just be me today. So you guys will have to talk to me today. You know, give me some input. Let me know what you think as we go through this. And like I said, share, tag somebody. Um, if you've not already gone to the Facebook page, make sure you go to the Facebook page and you invite all of your friends. Mama McCory, all of your friends, every one of them, <laughs> all of them, all of them, all of them. Uh, <laughs> and let them all know that the brothers are on and we are here to change our community one conversation at a time one conversation at a time um because these are the conversations we need to have um surrounding our communities because we want our communities to begin to thrive um and not just survive right and so i'm, I'm on a, on my um my stump right now we gotta have them thrive not just survive um so make sure you are Having these conversations. Hey, sports car lady. Hey, Cheryl. Great morning to you. So, yeah, definitely we're going to get into this conversation. Um, so this is, you know, it's not just a money thing. Um, it's, you know, it's a work thing. It's a uh, mental processing thing. <laughs> Teaching your kids to schedule. You know, we talked about that last week. And I, and I, it's so funny. I've really been thinking like, we really need to teach our kids to schedule, <laughs> like, how do you, you know, because the number one thing that we are taught, we, we grow up learning in our community is like having your own business, getting control of your time, you know, being able to have the freedom. But, you know, with with a vast level of freedom comes a certain level, a lot of responsibility. And if, you know, the number one thing with freedom um, is having control of your schedule. And, you know, when we say control, it's like, 
Are you scheduling the things that are important? Are you scheduling things in your life? Or are you just freestyling every single day? You know, all right. So let's dig into that. My brother from another mother has just stepped in the building. We're going to kick off this intro and we're going to get started with this conversation. This convo. Someone says convo is not a word. I disagree. <laughs> all right, let's go. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to another edition of the Brothers of Legacy. Yeah. Smack it. Caught you smacking this morning. Good morning, Pastor. Good morning. Blessings to everybody. Yes, indeed. Rich, it should catch up because it, it was no sound in the beginning. Because when you turn it on, you'll get the beginning part. So right now you should be able to hear me. I didn't realize my little thing switched to somewhere it's never never switched before. That'll just make things <laughs> interesting. So no one can hear me for the last for like two minutes. I was just chatting away. Um, but yeah, so today we are talking about past generations, <laughs> past championships. <laughs> Having a generational mindset, passing on good stuff, good stuff, good stuff. <laughs> It's no longer let's get rid of the generational cusses. <laughs> no. Um, so we're talking about do you have a generational mindset? And my temperature is like up and down. Like I was hot, cold when I came in here. Now I'm hot. All right. So <laughs> excuse me. So, like I said, today we're talking about uh having a generational mindset. Uh, make sure you share, make sure you tag. And let everybody know that the brothers are in the building. Um, yeah. All right. So today, like I said, we're talking about do you have a generational mindset? And what I mean by that, you know, are the things that you do, the things that you say, and, you know, what's what are you leaving your next generation um, <laughs> other than cash? Because everyone, you know, they want to have that life insurance. want to make sure they got cash because generally life insurance is designed to leave your family money based on the work that you've been doing. Like, so if you lived the next 20, 30 years, that's the amount of money you should be leaving your family. <laughs> that's that's the idea behind <laughs> life insurance. You know, I've heard life insurance is not to come up, you know, and I get it as a, you know, sometimes you want to leave a lot more, you know, you want to pass, you want to leave your family 8.5 million. I get it. I get it. Um, but you know, the goal of life insurance is of course to enough to bury you to cover <laughs> debts and then, yeah, not enough for them to put a countdown, an internal countdown for your death. <laughs> right. 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 <laughs> right. Cause I, I think like, you know, if someone's like, I just did a life insurance for 8.5. Ooh, that changed everybody's life. How you feeling today? <laughs> you know, like <laughs> cause you know, I love you, but. 8.5 would be nice. <laughs> it's one way to guarantee that folks will take care of you as you get older. <laughs> right, 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 right. This, I'll keep that in mind. Keep that in mind because, you know, money kind of can change some things. The, the, the thought of a big windfall can change some folks around you. Um, and, I, and I know that's harsh and it's hard to imagine. But I've I've seen it, you know, when, when folks pass, what I get? What I can, <laughs> what he lead me, what she lead me, you know, oh, uh, and we just we have money, money changes some things. So we're talking about the generational mindset of of preparing your family for the next level, for the next generation. You know what what are you leaving? You know mentally, uh, what kind of work are you leaving? You know, and that work has been kind of on my mind as well. Like not we have the brothers legacy, not just an organization. Um, but the mindset of even if you're leaving uh, money or land or property, um, they have the mindset to know what to do with it. You know, they have the mindset to to not go for the big sale 
but go with it so it generationally can provide an income, you know, like a st- <laughs> rather steady stream instead of right now. I know properties are super high. I can get 8.5 for it or <laughs> I could use it to produce an income, you know, that just brings in steady revenue. Um, so it's 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 teaching the words to the steady race instead of the windfalls, because, you know, once you sell, that's it. You got cash, but now you got to live somewhere and, you know, now you're burning through, you're burning through. Um, so that's kind of what I want to dig into today. And it's funny, you know, saying leaving such a huge amount of a life insurance can change the mindset of those that are around you. Um, I, I saw somebody put a post up one time. She said, should I do a, what's she say, a 500000 that I pay for or like a million plus and I have my kids pay for? Hmm. I'm like, you know, and and I, at first I actually thought I was like, I don't know, would you? But then I'm but saying it now, you know, with the mindset of every month I'm paying for something waiting for you to die because that's what I'm waiting for you to die. Every time I get this bill, especially if it's if I'm paying like five hundred dollars a month, you know, yeah, I'm I'm thinking about it. It's not five dollars a month. I'm not really thinking about it. It's just automatic or fifty dollars just automatically. I'm not even thinking about. It. But uh, active five hundred dollars a month, I'm like, you know, either I'm thinking, man, it's too much, or man, I can't wait <laughs> to get this money. You know, like yeah, what, what's the you know? Good morning, Aunt Sam. Good morning, good morning. Y'all looking real good on a, on this blessed day. I appreciate that. Appreciate that. Um, feeling good too. Feeling good. It's a better week. Better week. It's a healing <laughs> week. Uh, so, um, so Pastor, what do you think about like you know the the generational mindset as far as uh, the financial, the the material, um, <clears throat> the mental legacy that you're leaving? Um, what is what is your what is your thought process in it? I, you know, I think that, you know, for, for me, it's it's always a question of at one point, at what point in your life does your mind change from right. me to generation? Right. Right. Because right. It, it's all about your upbringing. It's all about the culture in which right. you were brought up in. Are you brought up in a culture that thinks about the future or are you brought up? Are you brought up in a culture that thinks about your own survival? Right. You know, a lot That's of us right here just living to survive. Yeah. You know, definitely. Uh, or we're surviving to live. Right. You know? So it's it's really about the mindset that you have, because certain people don't even understand what a generational mindset is. Right. You know, right. because I, I limit that to the generation, to, to my own personal existence, the timeline right. that I'm in. Right. Right. Me yeah. and mine. Yeah. Not definitely. about what's coming behind me. Right. You know, and that's the thing that I, I think we we have to really deal with. You know, at what point do you start thinking about who's coming after you? Yeah. You know, um, because I feel like, you know, it, life changed for me when I had children. Right. Yeah. When I 100%. when I brought a child into this world, I'm like, oh, OK. Now, everything right. that I do has an impact on this right. new life. Yes. You know, but yeah. then you have to go from everything that I do has an impact on this new life. Right. To, you know, the things that I need to do. Right. And right. how they impact this yeah. new life. Right. You know, because it's no longer about you. And I found out, you know, like, you know, you I have this old saying that the best things that will ever be said about me will probably be said after I'm gone. Right. Because it, it will be a result of the impact, not what I did for you, but what I left, how I impacted you. Oh, OK. Right. Uh, so. A lot of, you know, and so, you know, it's this whole thing, you know, everybody wants to be famous, but how many want to be impactful? Right. So, so thinking about a generational mindset is thinking about a mindset of, of impact, you know, how am I impacting? Because you can leave an insurance policy that, like you said, is cash. Right. Right. right? Or you can leave a plan. Right. Where Ooh, you'll never be hungry right. or you'll never be without. Definitely. You know, yeah. uh, and I think it's important to have a combination. You said something earlier, you know, if, if something happened to me today, you know, you want to make sure that my family can continue hey, in sure. the lifestyle right. that, uh, that I have provided for them. Yeah. You know, that I'm yeah. providing for them now. Good morning, right. Sister Kita. 
Uh, good morning, Sister Baker. Good morning, uh, Sam. Good morning, Richard. Good morning, Cheryl. Good morning, Mom. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you you know you really have to 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 think about the value that you put in your investments. What you know? Right. What am I investing in? How much am I investing in this area? That area? Is it information or is it in stuff? Right. And I got a right. fancy house. I got a yeah. nice car. Right. You know, or you know, versus my house is paid for. Right. Yeah. You know, that kind of thing. And so uh -huh. there's so much to it, man. Yeah. You know, but I'm just I'm trying to, to say a, a lot of different things to get people thinking about it. Right. You know, uh, what is a generational mindset? I want to make sure that, you know, those coming after me are an extension of my presence, an extension of my spirit right. as I have been in the earth. You right. know, show some signs yeah. that that you've been connected to me. But first, I have to live right. a life worthy, right, of that. You That's, know, yeah, that that right there. Yeah, it, it, it definitely matters. <laughs> the the <laughs> worthiness to be connected is a is such a funny thing. I was going to um, South Carolina State, and uh, one of my cousins, she was saying, um, two generational, two generations, three generations. She said, "You're." Um, one of your, I guess, like a cousin or something, was the president of the school, South Carolina State. So I was like, oh, snap. She was like, yeah, but don't ever say that. <laughs> don't ever tell anybody. I was like, what? Because he went down with corruption. I was like, that sucks. <laughs> like, that sucks. <laughs> like, wow. I can't, I can't, I was like, I can't, can't ever mention that. That sucks. <laughs> you know? And so I, I, when you said that, I was like, as much as you want to be connected to to greatness, it's like you don't want to be connected to that dude that just, you know, has had a height, but is more known like, you know, the the offsprings of O.J. Simpson, you know, like yeah. the greatest football player. But, <laughs> you know, like, and yeah. you know who your great, great, great uncle is? Oh, right. snap, is he? <laughs> well, right. You need to Google the whole story <laughs> before you shout out. <laughs> That yeah you're connected to them. Yeah. you know like you know and it's like it, it's it's great even let's see like, like you talk about our Kelly, like it's it's great oh my goodness you, you know but then you're connected to the whole story so it's it, yeah and so that generational mindset like the actions that you take though you know unfortunately and and you know oj and r kelly the, are the extremes but though maybe fulfilling or quick dollar or quick something you know can impact the rest of your generation like they can't you know your name means something you know like yeah. i would love i don't i don't want people to ride on, like my children to ride on the coattail of my name but to be able to say oh that's that's one of ad kids you know to yeah. at least get a shot because they've been connected to me like yeah. oh if you anything like your dad oh man let's let's talk <laughs> you know mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. i would absolutely love that you know my kids call or you know grand great 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 grands and just like oh yeah you're part of that that walker clan yeah come, you know i would i would that's you know if anything generationally to leave a good name what does the bible say about leaving a good reputation and a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches yeah boom we can close yeah. the show on that because yeah. <laughs> if any anything your, your good name means more than any possession because yeah. it's, it's as much as i can leave you <laughs> i'm throwing that number 8.5 to you you could have the opportunity to just make it from your name alone you know like they you'll get a better shot because of your connections you know well talk to any to talk to any professional athlete or any person that has won the lottery you, right. know, you win 10 million 10 years later you know the average they say that 10 years after a person wins the lottery typically they're broke again Wow. The number of professional athletes that earned, you know, 50, 40, right, right now, right now, right. 18 former NBA players. Oh, I know. I right. Heard. Oh, man. Have been caught up yes. in this health care scam right. where they've been robbing, essentially robbing the Benefits Association for the NBA of right. health care, filing, you know, right. improper claims. Glenn Big Baby Davis is part of this. Tony Allen, a lot of these guys. And you're talking about guys who've made 40, 50, 60 million dollars. Right. And now right. you're having to scam to make right. money. Right. 
right? So I can leave you eight million, but what good is eight million without a plan? Right. Exactly. Exactly. That's, yeah. And I think that's the part that we miss out, you know, because we always, you know, in we even I say some in my community I have as well, you know, admired, you know, you you watch the other other people that don't look like us, you know, get land and get stuff, but we don't look at the mindset or the plan that was left for them to maintain yeah. and why, you know, like I, I do lift, I pick the guy up and he had land from four generations ago, you know, and, and it's like, oh, wow, you know, but he probably was left with a plan like, don't you ever sell, you know, if you need equity, use the equity, pay the loan, you know, but don't lose this space, you know, um, and, and you're left with a plan. And like I, we talked earlier, like, why, you know, don't sell, but hold and try to invest and use, leave it in this family because we know land and property generally goes up. We had a moment <laughs> in 06, but for the most part, uh, you know, land and property goes up. It goes up. Oh, um, yeah. So, yeah, that that generational mindset and, and thinking about, like you said, with the the NBA players, like their names are great. You know, people connected, their families coming like, oh, I'm related to. But now it's like, yeah. I'm related to, <laughs> you know, like, you know, <laughs> if you had records. Yeah, like, you know, it's like, yeah, that's that's my uncle. But yeah, right. that, yeah, that did happen. Yeah, right. You know. right. But hey, like, he was good. He was good right. on the court, you know. Right. You know, but a I, month but ago, my, like, to me, it, it like that kind of stuff Yeah, shouldn't, and it won't resonate. It, it doesn't impact me because, I, you know, I'm not that person. Right. Right. And so... The question really is, what is what is my responsibility to my family? What is my responsibility to my community? What is my responsibility to my church? And all of that aligns with, you know, your covenant with God. Right. 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 You know, when 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 you go into covenant with God, when you have a relationship with Christ, you know, there are there are expectations like you have expectations of God to be your provider. God has expectations of you to be a good steward of that which I have provided you with. Right. 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 And and that's how that's the kind of mind. That's a generational mindset. You know, everything has to be about covenant, covenant agreement. You know, as as a father, I am a provider for my family. Uh, and and for my family to be recipients of those provisions, you know, I have expectations that you're going to do right by it. Right. You right. know, and, and not only do right by it, but make sure that you are paying attention to the process, paying attention to the stewardship. Yes. Right. Because yes. I can leave you property. Right. But then you lose the property because you didn't pay it. You know, you. Yeah. You paid the mortgage, right. but you forgot property taxes. Right. Right. You understand? And so there's so many. And I, the Bible says it's the small foxes that spoil the vine. So when you talk about having a generation of mindset, you know, it's it's not. And let's let's be clear. It's not just about financial resources. It's right. not just about stuff. Right. There's there's a there's a there's a responsibility and accountability for healthy living. Yes. Healthy lifestyle. Yes. You know, a a lot of us have obesity that runs in our families. You know, my mama was big, so I'm big. My daddy was big, so I'm big. And there was never a shift in the mindset, you know. And and so at some point, someone has to begin to care about longevity in life and and teaching good habits to the next generation. You know, I'm not saying everybody's got to run out there and, 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 and you know, run the, the, the 5K every I'm just saying that right. we have to start thinking. And I'm saying I'm guilty of this because, I, you know, like how many how often am I faithful going to the doctor? No, I make sure my children are. I, I live that do as I say and not as I do kind of thing. Right. <laughs> right. But then right. you have to think about it. Yeah. They're doing it because you said it. Yes. So if you're if you stop saying it, will they stop doing it? Hmm. You, so you have to recognize that there's something that I have to be living in right. front of my family for it. To, there, it has to be a cultural thing right. in order for them to adapt for in order for them to continue this thing on. You right. got to get to the point to where it's uncomfortable for them to do anything otherwise. Right. 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 I, I, I want I make sure my children pray enough to where if they don't pray, they feel odd. Right. You, right. you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and so that and those so those are generational mindsets 
that we have to have. So let's let's not confuse it. Let's not limit it to, you know, uh, assets. Right. physical assets, yeah. financial assets, but let's think about the mental and the psychological, the emotional. Right. You know, I want to make sure that that my children are healthy minded right. Right. as they grow up. Yes. Because they're, you're only as good as the, 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 the mindset that you have. Right. Right. And so yeah. if from, from a generational standpoint, I want to make sure that I try to provide as much of a wholesome and nurturing environment for my children so that when they grow up and they have children, Yes. They recognize how important it is to have that nurturing and and uh, a healthy, wholesome environment so that people can grow in a healthy manner. Yeah. Definitely. I, I think that um that having the, the right mentality that because I think I feel like, you know, going into our generation of raising children, um, you know, there's always um I want to teach more like for my household and you know like i know in yours you grew up you you were fortunate to grow up where you can kind of express yourself whereas my household wasn't so expressive so i try to give my children the leeway to them to express themselves to kind of change the direction of the kids just being <laughs> like i said being seen but not heard um but giving voice because uh it's funny i talked to uh my pastor my old pastor from new york and he was saying about his his son, his son is, you know, older, like, what is he now, 22 or something like that. And he was, they were driving around and driving past some park and the son didn't even want to look over there because he remembers some stuff that happened. Yeah, like it just traumatized. And, he, and you know, dad didn't even know about it. And it's like, you know, you know, having these conversations instead of sweeping it under the rug. Because I was like, that's been a generational issue as well, not discussing the pain points. And then because I get it as an adult, as a as a father, you know, you don't want to hear the spots where you really drop the ball. You know, like I was there, like I was right there. I was right in the other room. How did this happen? You know, and I and, and I can't like I can't imagine, you know, what that feels like. But it it happens, you know, so but be, having the courage to have those discussions so that pain doesn't carry over into their relationships because that's what happens this stuff carries over because they don't get a chance to express it discuss it so they stuff it down right. and it comes out in other ways right you know, so it's it's, it's so past i'm glad you kind of segued into that it's not just about financial assets it's not just about things um it's also about that emotional stability it's also about you know how are we leaving our kids in their emotional state so then when when my children have kids, you know, they're at, they they move up a notch, you know, and yeah. they have the discussion and conversation and we begin to stop doing the, you know, what happens in this house stays in this house. You know, yeah. when, <laughs> when there's a mental shift on issue, we go get uh, professional help or we have the conversations, you know, let's discuss but this I thing. Let's get it out. Go ahead. So so let's deal with that right there. Right. Because we, we are talking about and, and, I, and Sam, I didn't we didn't see your statement. You said, I hope my statement is not too long. I didn't see your statement. Yeah, I was thinking that, too. Uh, <laughs> yes. Miss yeah, yeah. Baker, that you're absolutely right. That's the point. You know, you get up like I, there's no way that I can leave my room <laughs> with an unmade bed. bed. I right. don't know how to do that. Right. I can't do it. Right. Um, because I've been doing it for so long, so consistently that. I, I can't and 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 in my house, the last thing you want to do is is have an unmade bed and it's noon. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Uh, uh, Sam, we didn't see your statement, so we don't know how. Um, yeah, go ahead, put it up again. Or yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't see it. It may, it may have been long and it blocked it. It didn't let you send it, so you might have to break it up. Uh, yeah, YouTube might be a little different. <laughs> But go ahead, Pastor. So, no, I was just thinking, I, I keep thinking about this thing, right? I keep thinking about this this conversation about generational mindset. Um, and I wanted to go down a, uh, another path uh, because the, the the temporary mindset, you know, you, you, you said something about uh, what happens in this house stays in this house. I would I would dare say that even when you go get help, it's still in the house. 
Right. Because the right. only people that are engaged with the external resource are the people who are impacted by whatever the issue is. Right. Right. And so we have to stop thinking that because we go for an external resource, we go out to get help, that we have lost the sanctity. Right. Of keeping yeah. it in the house. Yes, indeed. Yes, right. Indeed. We yeah. think that the minute you call help or call the pastor or call a counselor, you've released it out of the house. No, it's still in the house. Right. Right. Uh, when it gets released from the house in a negative way, that's when you're gossiping, when you're running your mouth. That's the thing. And so we got to realize that when we reach out for external resources to assist us in a, in a challenging situation, something that's beyond our ability to manage ourselves. Right. That's not letting it out of the house. Right. I got you. Yes. Indeed. Right. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And that and that's that temporary mindset. You're concerned about somebody being in your business, baby. You mean, what what? Like how how good is your business if your house is failing? Right, right, right. Yep. I mean, what what good is it? You know, because at some point people are going to find out. I've I've realized that uh, if my family is successful, God gets the glory. Right. right. If my family fails, I get the blame. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. That's true. So why don't I just stay Christ centered through it all? Right. Right. And and remain healthy because it it, ha it cannot be about my temper. I can't be concerned about, you know, the my my pride being impacted because something is beyond my control. Yeah. There are things that are going to happen that are beyond your control. And the only way for you, for your family, for the next generation to survive is that they learn through your example that right. you can't control everything. Yes. You're right. And it's OK to get help. Yep. The quickest way to, to cut off the next generation is to make them think that you can handle it all. Right. That's true. That is true. It is. It is. Uh, oh, there you go. Uh, see, indeed. Um, so, yeah, we have to be able to, you know, to, and and it's so funny that you said uh, it's the, the showing as well, teaching the habits. Um you know, through actions as well, like you're saying with the doctor, you know, you can only tell them, but so much soon they're going to watch your habits and they're going to mimic your ways. Um, and I and I think that that action, actionable steps, you know, becoming get it. And that's a generational mindset. Like, OK, we all need to, to, to get out of this. This We're trying to lose the weight or we're trying to eat better and do stuff. So I got to I got to lead the way <laughs> I got to show them what it looks like because it's one thing to to tell somebody this hey this is how you live right <laughs> it's another thing to show them because it's it's challenging because they're watching you and they don't know how that looks they have no idea what the daily habits it takes to really live like that so yeah you know it's it's living it out in front of your children and it creates a generational pattern where you know they have kids they'll do the same thing because like you said, they get up, they'll make the bed. You know, they get up, they'll clean certain things. It's it's a mindset. Whereas we just wow, 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 yelling, 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 do this, do this, do this, do this. But you're not showing the habits. And I had to kind of check myself on certain things. I'm like, well, you're not really showing them the habits. They they list, they hear what you say, but they don't see what you say. You know, so we have to get into that seeing, that habitual. Um, and <laughs> you know, and the excuses that you're making, the same ones they're making in their heads. So we gotta, if we really want to start changing certain things in our household, you know, we have to lead the way in it. And yeah. I know like, and like you're solidified in your habit because either you didn't see it or you didn't pay attention to it, or you didn't listen, or you just kind of broke, broke ranks. Cause I'm not gonna put it all on my parents. <laughs> I, I know I broke ranks right. on certain things. Oh, um, right. So it's just following those 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 things that you see. And so if you want your children to do certain things, they got to see it in you as well. The prayer, the the, the worship and the the reading the scriptures, like what does that look like? You know, what is and, and, and not only okay. that, but it has to be you have to make it attractive. Yeah, exactly. you understand. Like, yeah. like one thing that I've learned, you know, being in ministry and with my family, with my children. They're not going to do it just because you do it. Right. Or, or they right. will because you told them to. <laughs> right. But they're not right. getting anything out of it. 
Yeah. Right. Definitely. But I, I, I'm like, I found out that people in ministry, a lot of times your children don't follow you in the church, in the ministry, because you're not testifying at home. You save all your testimonies for the church. Right. right? You put it on display at the church. Right. But do your children know how good God is? Right. At home, like if, if you want a generation of people that that are glad to be in the service, you know, we've seen I'm glad to be in the service. You know, one more time. We, uh, you know, we sing that song, but not everybody's singing the song and clapping their hands. They're glad to be in the service. They, they're going through the motion, you know, and and what I'm what I'm learning is is at when you're at home. Right. Your children need to see just how good God is at home. Mental illness is an area where we have been taught it's a sign of weakness to seek external help. Right. Yet we encourage family to Let's seek see a here. medical the doctor. Medical doctor. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, indeed. Absolutely. Yes. Indeed. yes. You yep. need a garbage man to pick your garbage up from outside your house right. every week. Right. Right. right? Yep. And and so if you have mental anguish, apps that at that. that Look, Sister Baker, you you, you <laughs> preaching this morning. You preaching, right, right. you know. Um, but but what I'm saying is, you you have to make these things attractive, right. make them inviting to the next generation, right. so that it's not a task; it's right. an experience. Right. You know, yeah, um, yeah. money yeah. management, resource management has to be an experience. You know, you have to be careful how you approach what you have to do at home. Right. Now, if you're at home, I got to pay these bills. Right. Your children will grow up. Will grow. I'm like, oh, thank God I was able to get this taken care of. We got lights. Right. You know, Just, you know what I mean? I'm like yeah. the ability, like you're frustrated because you got to go grocery shopping. If I don't go grocery shopping, we don't eat properly. Right. right. And, you know, so I got it. Ooh, you guys, went, my mom used to pack us up and it, it was so exciting to go grocery shopping because wow. we didn't have a car. Ah, okay. right. Okay. So it was always a journey. It was You're right, you know, right, 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 right. We load right. up in the taxi cab, and and, and right. we would get the little taxi cab, the uh, the, the, the checkered cabs where they had the little seats that lifted up out of the floor and and unfolded. Right. Okay. You know. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I used to call those DC cabs because I saw the movie DC <laughs> Cab back in the eighties. You know, and. Uh, <clears throat> And and I'll never forget one day I ordered. I, my mom said, "Call a taxi so we can go to the store." I'm like, "Hey, can you send us one of those DC cabs?" And the dispatch was like, "You've been watching too much TV." <laughs> <laughs> but but the thing is, it was it was an experience, right? Right. And and that's where you we learned never go to the store hungry. Right. 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 Because right. you go to the store hungry, you grabbing everything, you know, yeah. and that right. frustrates parents. And so yes. like generational stuff, that's a great generational lesson teaching your children, you know, to you know, feed your children before you go to the store because right. they're less likely to grab everything. They'll grab. They, it doesn't mean they'll stop grabbing no. stuff, but they'll yeah. grab fewer things, fewer things right. if they're not hungry when they go to the store. It's right. little things like that. Right. Uh, and and then you make it exciting. Hey, we're gonna put sit down and put the list together. Do you remember? Like I, I tell my daughters, I remember when washing dishes was a joy, and mm -hmm. then it became a task. Wow! Right? You used right. to voluntarily get up there and want to wash dishes until you it became your job. Right? Right? That's, that was my daughter. Right? It, it, it's stuff. every daughter. <laughs> it, it's every daughter. She right? Went, I want to do that. I want to do that. I yeah. Do that until. Right. Because you see, you know, your parent, they they they're curious about it. And so right. what has to happen is you have to get them to the point like you never leave them alone at the sink. Mm, OK, you understand yeah. when you see a, a, a man and a woman working in a kitchen together, that's somebody who grew up. In a lot of cases with that being fun. Gotcha. You know, I used to get in the kitchen with my mother and it never grew old to me. Right. Right yeah. now on the holidays, if she's visiting, she gets in the kitchen with me. Wow. OK. Right. Okay. Because it was always I'm not saying it's going to be like that for everything. No, but no, what no. you have I mean, to do is you have I mean, to make it as inviting, as right. attractive as you can. Right. So that they grow up with a mindset of I get joy out of this right. as opposed right. to being just a task. You know, right. and, and, and educational, you know, how important is it to wash dishes? Because you don't want yesterday's food on today's plate. 
Get the same right? Chick the little yesterday. Yeah, I mean, like we, you like I'm, I'm like, you know, you, you know, you teach them to, you know, rub your hands. Yeah, yeah. On the plate, yeah, the plate. see if you feel anything <laughs> crumbly or anything, you know, right. you know, right. uh, rub your hand and see if it still feels greasy. Easy. Man, yeah. see, ooh, that's a good plate. That see, you do, you doing something, you know? Right. It, like make it, it has to become joyful, right? Right to the point to where you have a dishwasher and it's never worked, right? Because you never use it. Because I get more joy out of you. Ever, you know those people who wash the dishes and put them in the dishwasher clean, right? Yo, oh, oh, my bad, my bad, my bad, <laughs> my bad. Okay, we do it. You know, it's like a, it's a dryer. It's a big old dryer. It's a dryer. Right. But but you know, like yeah. it's you know, you challenge yourself at the end yes. of the month. You know, make sure you have something left so you can celebrate. Definitely. You know, it's yeah. See, I, I have no issue washing dishes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sister, I, yeah, none I don't, I don't have an issue. Yeah. I take pride in it, but everything in the kitchen I take pride in because I I want I want someone to come in, wipe their hand across my countertop. Oh yeah. Right, and feel nothing. Right, you know. Right. I, I want your stainless steel refrigerator. I want you to come in and see yourself. Right, in right, the refrigerator. Right. I don't want to see those streaks yeah. because you clean the refrigerator with a dirty dish towel. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, it, it's a uh, little bit. And, and what I'm saying is that's when you get joy out of it. And right. so you have to get a joy out of solid financial management, get a joy out of your prayer life, you know, uh, testify to your children. If God has been good to you, they'll learn to give God glory in their own lives. Right. I read right. that once. I, I, yeah, like some of this, like they put, uh, if you're praying for something, you know, let your kids know that we're praying for a certain thing and we, we're looking for a, a certain outcome. So when it comes through, they can see, you know, this is what we wanted, you know, or this is what we needed. We asked God, God came through. Look at Jesus, you know. So they begin to, he said, the white glove test works for me. Oh no, I could, I could do a little. You can do a little shade of less than white because <laughs> my cleaning is dope, but whew, I don't know how I'll, I'll pass that all the time. Oh, um, but yeah, it's 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 that it's that showing. And that's true that I I think that's one thing I need to to change in my household because it's been a lot of do this, do this, this is what we do, do this, do this, do this. So, you know. My kids are becoming the, oh, all right, today's Sunday, all right, right. today's Monday, okay, right. all right. You know, and I'm creating the monster that I was, you know, like how yeah. I live my life and just, I watch my parents, okay, today's Sunday, okay, today's Monday. Yeah, you know, like, yeah. Let's, let's just get through the day, you know, yeah. and what's that song, Living for the Weekend, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Living for the Weekend, you know, and you're, and you're just waiting you know, for or for a vacation, or you're waiting. You know, we don't smile till there's a, a break. <laughs> I've, like, listen, I've, I've heard people say, "Oh, it's Friday." I'm right. Like, what does that mean? <laughs> right. Oh, that, oh, that's for the people who only work five days a week. Right. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> right. 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 The weekend is here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Right. I mean, it's like it's like Valentine's Day. Right. The amount of money that is made for vendors yes. on Valentine's Day because it's yes. the one time of the year that you actually do something nice for your mate. Right. 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 I'm like, and, and I'm like, I, I don't want Valentine's Day to be the day. Right. I want it to be a day. A day. A day. Right. Yeah. It, because honestly, if you get something sweet for your mate. I don't, I don't even want to go out. It's, yeah, it's the, it's the I, I want to, you know, like, I, the, I want my mate to forget that Valentine's Day. Oh, oh yesterday was Valentine's Day. Oh. Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Right. You're right. Yeah, like, I don't, you know, there shouldn't be a long, li like, I don't know what to do for my wife when her birthday comes. Because, like, the woman has everything. Right. <laughs> Christmas is every day, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, and that's, a, you know, we have to have, we have to change our mindsets. Right. When it comes to these types of things. So that's when you begin to, to, to enjoy the fullness of life. Right. And that is a great generational mindset right right and 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 it's a mindset that will keep you from going broke emotionally financially spiritually mentally psychologically it'll keep you from growing from going broke uh and and i think communication is one of the the, the most key factors oh, oh there it is there's the book All right 
because <laughs> my mind <laughs> today than, than past days. One thing I've learned that a generational is shaped by its time and culture. When I think about the times my son was growing up, is such a different time now to hear him say now he has a plan to be the man that he needs to be for his children and his wife today families are not as close as they were in time as meaning that working together and caring for one another has truly changed the mindsets of families has been torn apart so there so <laughs> so there's a lot so there's yeah. a lot there right yeah um and Sam says, my mindset is different today than past days. Right. And and one of the points that I'm trying to make is the question would be why. Right. You know, why is it different today? It's different right. today because it means that 25 years ago, you weren't in a generational mindset. Right. Because if 25 years ago you were in a generational mindset, then right. your mindset wouldn't be so different. The situation around you, your environment may have changed, right. but your mindset and how you go about doing things should yes. be consistent with what yep. it was 25 years ago. And yep. that's exactly the point on Sam. You say you think about the times when your son was growing up. I think about the times when I was growing up. The reality is a lot of the stuff that was happened that that happened as a child still happens today you know right. reading to your children that's right. a generational mindset right. my mom read to us so right. we read to our children i've read to my children you know those interacting with them you know all that that's timeless right those types of things are timeless quality communication effective communication is timeless yeah. but what happens is oh wow i didn't use there were times when i didn't really want to share i didn't want to talk and now i think differently Right. Now you have a better, a more impactful mindset. And that's the issue that we have in a lot of our families. And Sam, you said that uh, uh, families are not as close today. You mean your family? Right. Because that's not true for yeah. all families. families. No. You know, there, there are families that are that are as tight as families have ever been. Right. You know, there are families that are tighter today than they were years ago. Right. You know, so uh, it just it's all relative. And so yeah. it forces us to take a closer look at what we're doing and how we're doing, what our mindset is and how we need to shift our mindset. Because I will tell you, I, you know, I, I love my family. I can't spend as much time with my family as I would like to. But right. that doesn't mean it's not in my heart. Right. But right. what I've learned is as much as I long to do that, not everybody has the same mindset. Right. That's true. You understand? And so we have to live with those things. And so, yeah, see, Sister Baker said her, her family's still close. Sister Baker, you, you Sister Baker now, if, if you've ever Sister Baker. <laughs> yeah. Right. So so <clears throat> we but but the blessing is you you're conscious of it today on Sam. That's right. the blessing. Being conscious of it is critical because now, you know, I, I've learned the statement when you know better, you do better. Right. Definitely. Right. <clears throat> Definitely. Oh, um, yeah. That because it's because for me, you know, we're real tight. You know, we we talk way more than I've, you know, I've ever talked in my household when I was a child. You know, me and my brother kind of like working to build something. Not sure what broke us so much. But, yeah, it's, you know, my kids are, are tight. They, you know, they fight together. They love each other. You, you know, like they communicate a lot to each other. Oh. Um, and our family is tight and we push that, you know, we push being tight. We push having fun and connecting together um, because we, you know, we always, we all we got, you know, like, and we, you know, to, to watch out for each other and to do things like that. So and we're, we're tighter than generational, you know, my fam, like my side of the family is not tight at all. You know, we, they have like the, the, the nuclear family is okay, but as far as, as a full unit, they're not. So I'm my goal and even my wife, our goal is this this Walker group right here is going to expand out and continue to be tight, you know, from the grands to the great grands. to the you know, like we're going to have a central spot where we're coming together and dealing with stuff. You know, it's going to be them, them tight, tough moments and we're going to we're going to barrel through it. So we're going to stick together. My goal is not to have a bunch of secrets. Oh, um, he said, yes. She said, yes, and I was speaking of every family because there are some families that are tight as wire. On the other hand, when I, I think of parents who allow their children to never read a book, sit in front of the computer or whatever technology that is available to them, their closest is not as close as it would be if they would spend time to, yeah, 
and make time for each other to share with our technology and open conversations. Um, said correction, I wasn't speaking of every family, I was speaking in general. I hear what you're saying. Yeah, um, yeah, we got you on Sam. I, and, and I wasn't saying that to you. I was saying that that could be the mindset of many, but it's a right. relative statement. Right. That's what I mean. It could be for you know an individual's family, but to your point, not to every family. You're absolutely right on Sam. And that whole thing about you know a, a child with technology versus a book. You know, when 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 our children were young, they didn't watch much TV right. while in school. You know, TV came on the weekend. Yeah. For the most you part. know. Yeah. And it was a it was a reward. Right. 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 And and the older they got, the more mature they got, the more liberation they got. Right. But right. what I learned is the more you give them, the more they will take. Right. All right. Uh, and right. then there was the going into the room on a Wednesday night at 10 o'clock and, and seeing the TV on when it's not supposed to be on. Right. 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 It's yeah. it's the it's the giving them the the iPod right. and them learning, you know, because it used to be children. all They all wanted the iPod. Right. They went right. from the iPod to the phone. Right. You know? Right. And and I remember my girls celebrating the iPod at 12 or 13 years old wow. when all their friends already had phones. They were celebrating getting an iPod. <laughs> right. Right. It's the truth. But but what I did was I tried to educate them and I let them know, you know, like if 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 I take you to school. Right. If I bring you home. What do you need a phone for? <laughs> right. Right. Who are you calling? Right. That you can't call using the phone at home. That's where we are right now. You're right. Yeah. There's no, no real need, no function for it. Yeah. There's, there's, Not yeah. But I had to explain that. Right. Right. You know, help them understand it. And, and, and then they got a different view. And, and then they, they started taking a closer look at some of the children that interacted with the school. Mm. You know, some of them had it because it was a fad, but some right. of them had it because they had to hit three different houses before they actually made it home. Right. Right. They needed that connection to their yeah. parents, you know, so yeah. there, there's all. And so, I, you know, my thing is educate. That's why I said communication. Generational mindset includes effective, open, fluid communication. Right. You know, um, uh, so it, anyway, I, I guess. And, and so I, I felt like the more I gave them, the more they took. And right. then it got to the point where I had to pull them back in. Right. Right. When you lose that generational mindset, or you give too much too soon. Right. You have to learn. Uh, that you have to pay. There's a price for that. Right. And, and you have to learn to reel them back in. And it's harder to reel them in once they've had a taste. Yes. You know, Pookie yeah. said, he keep calling me, keep calling me, man. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> right. right. Uh, so generational mindset is, right. is a mindset of mitigation. Right. It, I can't stop things from happening, but I can mitigate the impact of negative things happening by educating my children by, you know, I want to broaden their horizons, but I want to make sure I don't give them too much too soon Definitely. so that, you know, because we, you ever been in a situation where you're having a conversation with another adult and there's a young person in the room who's too young to be a part of the conversation, but they insert themselves into the conversation. Yeah. That's someone who got too much too soon. Right. <laughs> right. Indeed. Indeed. Yeah. yeah and, so, and and you yeah. can poison a mindset. Yep. <clears throat> uh, Shirley Baker says me and my seven siblings oh. and their children are very close despite disagreements. Right. We were raised knowing love is more valuable than monetary things, yet monetary things have their absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Right. Um, yes. My my son who passed away. Loved family. He loved his family. And and it was never about the house. Right. It was never about where we lived. My son would live in a trailer as long as he had his family with him. Right? right. It just it just didn't matter. It, he didn't care right. where we were as long as everybody was together. Right. You know, that's what that was what was important. And yep. and that's what uh Sister Baker's talking about. You have to get into the mindset, get to a place to where it's all about the quality of life. Right. With your loved ones. Right. You know. Right. It's definitely about that quality. It's about, you know, and I challenge you to, to kind of raise the temperament in your home. And and Pastor says something that, that really struck home. And I'm and I'm and I'm man enough 
to admit it. <laughs> it's been, like I said, the dredging of, of days, you know, of, of certain days and school and things of that nature. You know, it's there's there's always, of course, a seriousness to it. But there's also especially dealing with your kids to, to make it easier to to do to deal with, you know, because though there are points as an adult, you know, it's the have to. <laughs> it's like, you know, you get if them dishes ain't washed, I who gonna do it? <laughs> you know, if this house ain't swept or clean, who gonna do it? So and at least try to make it where it becomes habitual in your kids in a in a more light, lighter way as opposed to be so dredging, you know. So because when because <laughs> the kids can get older, become adults, I ain't never gonna wash dishes again. I'm gonna just run this dishwasher every time, you know, because they think about things as an as an adult that you like, man. I ain't man, they wore me out when I was young doing this particular task. I never, ever want to do this again. You know, I yeah. think mine was like dusting. <laughs> Had so much stuff dusted, just using that pledge and the in the rag, <laughs> just dusting. Oh yeah. But, I can't wait till I grow up where I don't have to do this anymore. Right. <laughs> right. Oh, well, you're gonna you're gonna live on the streets, right? <laughs> right. What, right. What do you mean? Right. I can't wait till I become 18. All right. All right. When you say when you turn 18, you're gonna be like, I can't wait till I'm 21. When you're 21, I can't wait till I'm 25. You're 25, I can't wait till I'm 30. 30. <laughs> right. <laughs> Right. That's that's another. But you, but, the, and that, but that's why you have to. That's why you have to educate young people. Right. Right. I was thirty before I was thirty. Wow. wow. Right. Yeah. When I was twenty eight. Yeah. I'm like I'm. I look. I, well, I'm. I would say I'm right at thirty. Right. <laughs> I'm right, I'm, I'm right there. there. I'm right. You know, there. I'm thirty three. I'm, I'm right at thirty five. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, just moving it up. I'm just yeah, I, yeah. Or you'd always bump it up, you know. Right. And then it's like, you, what's the difference? And so, so the mindset has to be: let me relish in the moment that I have today. Right. You know, a generational mindset is a mindset that says, let me maximize where I am. Right. Right. And stop trying to live in where I am not. Right. Woo! Right. Man, right. do you hear me? Do you know how much more life would be fulfilling if you could just appreciate and, and you know, live in appreciation for where you are and what you have. Right. You know, while you're thriving. Right. To obtain more. Right. You know, but don't put yourself where you're not. That's not living negatively. That's not uh, sowing a seed of doubt in your mind. The thing is, I am where I am, and I thank God for where I am because where I am is not where I used to be. But I know that I'm going. I'm heading to a better place. Right. You know, we a lot of us get in trouble because we're trying to live what somebody else is living, but we have not experienced what they've experienced and haven't done the work that they've done. Yes. Right. That's yep. the reality. And and so in our in our homes, we have to a generational mindset is a mindset that teaches people to appreciate the value of where you are. Right. One right. of my sisters left home because she refused to wash dishes. Two years later, she was married and realized. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Because you, you don't stop eating. Right. You know, paper plates. <laughs> yeah, but you know, I'm gonna tell you something. Uh, my yeah. wife, I, I, I don't, I have no problem eating off paper plates, right? None right. whatsoever. But my wife will give me a plate, right? She says, you know, because she says I got to remind you that you're a king, right? She's not telling me that I have forgotten that I was a king. She's right. validating to me, yep, who I am to her. Yes, right. Yep, yep. that's real. And and that's so right. and, and my thing is, I use paper plates. All my house is never without paper plates, right. but I appreciate yeah. the fact that this yeah. woman will go in the kitchen right. and intentionally put something on a glass plate, yes, yes. and give it to me, yes, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. because it speaks volumes not about who I am, but how she sees me, yes. And yeah. so, when we talk about a generational mindset, let me get into this how you see your children, right. Right. Uh, do you see them as ooh these doggone kids, these doggone kids? Who Lord they get on my nerves, you know? Or do you see them as the future right. success of your family? Yeah, yeah, right. 
Yep. We have to remind, and I'm saying I, I don't, I haven't perfected this. This, you know, this, this, everything that I'm saying is chewed up already, right? right. I'm, I'm, right. I'm saying that we have to remind ourselves that we brought these children into the world. So if they're clowning, check the makeup on your face. <laughs> your children are clowning, but you have the red nose. Right. 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 Uh, right. So go the head. So goes the body. Body. You yes. know. Uh, and so we and so again, a couple of things. See the future of your children right. that will help you determine how you how you deal with them today. If right. you see them in the future. Yes. Right. If you're reckless with them today, they have a reckless future. Right. That's reality. Just like if you're reckless with your money today, you'll have a reckless financial future right. or you won't have a future. You know, yes. so generational mindset is let me make sure that everything I'm doing today is going to bless me in five years. Right. Yep. Whatever I'm putting into my child today is going to be a blessing in 25 years. Right. That's you know, good. that's good. And that's and, a generational mindset. And and it's um like mentioning both hands. It's it's the work and the knowledge. Yet it's the, the fun and the intrigue for them to stay on track. <laughs> So we have to have to balance the two. You know, that's that's the one thing you got to balance the two. And that that that's really like what I'm thinking about now, like just balancing the two between the 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 work and the fun, you know, and sometimes making the work fun makes it easier and it, it can trigger. They'll they'll do more things if they feel like they're getting a reward out of it. You know, it's that reward, like certain things that you do. Like like this, I love doing this. They they won't like this morning though. It was rough getting up, <laughs> but the reward of of sharing and being here, you know, it's it's that reward that 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 reward of the work. Um, so I I am and, and I'm incredibly thankful uh, for my kids. I love them. Their moments, their moments. <laughs> He's <laughs> sag on kids. <laughs> I'm sorry. I love like my children. Lord. <laughs> Lord. <laughs> All right. And we're going to get out of here. But I want, before, I want to, I'm going to leave y'all with some homework. Everyone that's listening, I want you to go <laughs> look up the definition of kid. I need you to go look up <laughs> the definition <laughs> of kid. And and uh, yeah, maybe we shouldn't use that word anymore. I mean, it's it's not derogatory. Don't worry, but it's it's a little rough. You're like, oh, is that what I've been calling yeah. this job? But maybe yeah. they are. <laughs> oh, maybe they are. But um, look it up. Um, uh, and we'll 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 reconvene tomorrow, same time, same place. So we look forward to seeing you guys. Thank you guys for rocking. All my podcast people, thanks for rocking to the end. Uh, make sure you share. Make sure you tag. Let everybody know that the brothers are in the building. We'll be here tomorrow at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And, you know, you know how we do. So, like I said, uh, make sure you share. We got we're going to continue in this conversation. I always like to take it up a notch and uh, we'll we'll further this conversation. Uh, but I appreciate you guys being here. You could be anywhere, but you're rocking with us. And I love I love the interaction. I love you guys coming through. I don't take you guys for granted. So I appreciate you just share with your friends if you get if you're part of the text community and if you're not make sure you text uh uh lw into 84576 i promise you i don't text you too much i do text you in the morning around nine ish i make sure i don't text too early i text right at the time of the broadcast you should be up by then well unless you're in california kind of early but just join it anyway join our text community lw into 84576 and you never miss what the brothers are doing um, what the Legacy Walker Network is a part of and the different programs and broadcasts that we're having. All right. If all hearts and minds are clear, we appreciate you guys for being here. Um, we look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow, same time, same channel. Pastor, you want to share something before we leave? No, love love the interaction from you, Sister Baker. Appreciate yes. you. Yes, yeah, Sister Baker, appreciate you. Unsam, appreciate you. More. Yes. You guys that are interacting and, and throwing some comments up, I appreciate it. And listen, if you're just chilling in the back watching, I appreciate you as well. Yeah, yeah we do. Up. Absolutely. <laughs> we're, we're, not, we're, not, we're not leaving you out. We just yeah, right. appreciate you. <laughs> Definitely. I know you might be working or doing something, and you might have it loud somewhere, letting other people hear right. what's going on. I appreciate that as well. All right. I know my so mom good. does. She's in the kitchen. She's always, always got us on the speaker. Yes, I love it. Yeah. I love it. All right, guys. We look forward to seeing you guys. Same time, same channel. Be safe. Keep wearing a mask, six feet. You know what to do. This is how we do. This is life. All right. Take care.
as always, we love you. Uh, know that God loves you more. Stay safe. Thank you guys for rocking and hanging. Make sure you're sharing is caring. All of my replay peoples that watch in the background.